Snack maker Mondelez just out with earnings beating on the top and bottom lines as globally people continue to consume snacks at home during the pandemic. The company says it does see organic revenue growth in the high single digits this year. Let's bring in the CEO of Mondelez. First reaction, Dirk Vandeput. Thank you for joining us here first on CNBC. What, take us behind the numbers as far as the trends you're seeing from people buying snacks. Well, thank you for having me, Sarah. Um, well, what, what we see is, is in fact, uh, what we've been seeing uh, all the time uh, since the uh, COVID crisis uh, started, which is uh, we see more at home consumption from snacks. We see people snacking more because they, they feel uh, stressed. Um, the snacking that we see is um, split between uh, indulgent snacking because of that uncomfortable feeling, but also very healthy snacking. Um, we have seen a lot more online buying, um, a lot less, of course, on the go consumption. Um, as you go around the world, uh, certainly the US, we have a very marked trend of that increased snacking in Europe, it's sort of uh, a, a normal situation. And then the emerging markets, certainly in the second quarter, and uh, were down quite a bit. They came back in the third and even stronger in the fourth quarter. So we see the, the trend in North America continuing, although not to the same level as it used to be in the beginning of the COVID crisis, but still at a, at a significantly increased level versus what it used to be before the crisis. Uh, Europe is, is, is where it normally would be, and then we have the emerging markets coming back. So that, that has led to a, a very good uh, fourth quarter for us. Yeah, U.S., really a bright spot. I highlighted this when I broke the numbers. More than double what we saw in Europe. Why is that? What, what is, it? is it a case of just the economy holding up better here in the U.S., more stimulus money or something else? It, it, it has to see uh, with the fact that uh, our business in the U.S. is mostly biscuits. We're largely a biscuit and chocolate company with also some gum and candy. Uh, the, the U.S. business is, is largely biscuits, and, and consumers tend to consume more at home of those biscuits. Our chocolate business, we don't have that much in the U.S. We have more of a chocolate business in Europe. Uh, in Europe, we also uh, have a... Uh, a bigger away from home consumption of our products. So it has to see with the product mm. mix and it has to see with the channel mix really in, in our categories. If you think about some of the trends we've adopted now, what, 10 months into the pandemic at least, clearly big brands have worked. People are cooking and especially baking more at home. They're yep. buying and making more coffee at home. If you think about where we are on the other side, assuming we all get vaccinated or enough of us do, what sticks? What are the food trends look like on the other side? Well, I think the, the snacking was always on the, on the rise and, and more and more people are opting for smaller meals uh, or smaller snacks throughout the day, not three big meals. That was accelerated through the pandemic and I think that is going to stick. Um, where consumers buy is also, has also changed in a major way. E-commerce, as you can imagine, I think that is going to stick and accelerate. What we see is that consumers are very pleased with their online buying. They like it better than in-store buying. So I think that's going to accelerate. Um, I think what, what will go down a little bit is that increased at-home consumption because the consumers will go back to work. Uh, kids will go back to school. They will eat uh, at work or have breakfast on the go. So I think that will uh, diminish the, the at-home consumption. But for the rest, I think the other thing that we see, we have a gum business. That's a business that's uh, heavily affected because it's an on-the-go on type of uh, category. That category will come back. So some of it will stick and other things will just refer to what they used to be uh, before the crisis. How, how, how does Lady Gaga factor into your guidance, Dirk? <laughs> You're out with the new uh, Oreos. <laughs> They're very cool. They're hot pink <laughs> with green. It's yeah. almost what I would pick myself. Is that really a sales driver partnering with someone like that? How does that? How does that? How do the economics of that work? Uh, yes, it is a sales driver. It gives Oreo fans another reason to buy Oreo. It it also gives the Lady Gaga fans uh, an opportunity. But but more important than that, it's about the the purpose of Oreo is to bring more joy and fun in the world. Lady Gaga's new album Chromatica is about a kinder world. Her uh, charity is about, uh, born this way. 
um, uh, is, is also about a kinder world. So bringing the two brands together, we're trying to be more purposeful in what we do for Oreo. And she's trying to do the same thing. We thought there would be a very nice match. And then, of course, the package and the, the product reflects that uh, Chromatica world, her new album. And, and, and I think it's just a very cool thing to, to buy and to have. And, and I think it also will generate some awareness for the causes that she stands for. Just the latest in uh, driving awareness for Oreo's brand. Dirk, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Right no, off those numbers. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Dirk Vandeput, CEO of Mondelez. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.